Good morning. Well, let's uh, start this morning with prayer, shall we? Father, help us to focus today on you. <laughs> Father, we are so thankful for Genesis 12, 1 through 3, as we continue to meditate. Be with us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm going to read from Genesis 12, 1 through 3 again. This is word of the Lord. The Lord has said to Abram, leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse, and all people on earth will be blessed through you. Wow. Amen to that. Well, to that, I found this article or the sermon notes um, that launched our Oikos ministry. And wow, I look so young there. 30, I guess, 30 years ago, I was 30. <laughs> Actually, I was 29 when I wrote that uh, with full of hair. Um, I launched a group called Christian Korean American Alliance because uh, I wanted to research on second gen. You know, nothing really changed about me, I guess. <laughs> 30 years ago in America, I launched a research center called Christian Korean American Alliance. And then I, I wrote, there are many things we want to accomplish. However, the single most important factor in this group is Christ. And that's why I would put the identity of Christian before anything else. Without him, we have no purpose of being. I believe our identity as Christian supersedes even that of our identity as Korean Americans. Therefore, this group is rightfully called Christian Korean American Alliance and not Korean American Christian Alliance. So I wrote and preached on November 22nd, 1992, 30 years ago. I said, listen, this is now the purpose of our church. So it's been now almost two years, because February 3rd, 91, I planted, and two years of testing out the water and said, this is the foundational teaching. This is Oikos church purpose statement. Oikos, in those days, it was pretty fashionable. Everybody said, oh, you must have purpose statement. Uh, well, this is our purpose statement. Oikos Community Church is dedicated to serve our Lord Jesus Christ in obeying the Great Commission by observing the Great Commandment through the Shepherd Group outreach and building up the Great Church of God. Three great. Great Commission, Great Church, Great Commandment. And it comes spin off out of Genesis 12, 1 through 3. You shall be a great nation, I will make your name great, and you will be a great blessing. So Great Nation corresponds with Great Commission. Great church corresponds with great name. Great commandment corresponds with great blessing. So out of this triune God, we're talking about kingdom of God to be extended through being a great nation. We want to extend the name of Jesus to be extended and exalted through our being a great church, the body of Christ. And then great commandment, great blessing to be demonstration of the Holy Spirit God, right? To be experienced. Wow, it's pretty airtight theology of church. <laughs> then I wrote or uh, argue or preach, great, what does that mean, right? What does that mean to be great? Because uh, greatness is so different than culture to culture. Now, you know, when we say uh, in Cambodia, oh, he's a big boss, great man, doesn't mean he's the richest, you know. No, but he's with authority, with benevolence, um, taking care of the poor. That's the greatness in Cambodia, at least traditionally. Unfortunately, the capitalistic model came in and is now the guy with the most money. He makes the rules, he's most respected, and he rule over people. That's the golden rule. He who has gold makes the rule. It's unfortunate. But what is greatness, right? When God said that you're going to be great, right? And we covered that already. Greatness is to be increased also it means to be uh, not not just for yourself how by going not just great but by going right uh, you need to basically in on the move and over and over and over again you know you cannot 
Uh, God cannot lead you if you're sitting on your couch watching TV. You know, it's so amazing how uh, the whole, so many people complain that God doesn't speak to me, right? How, how do you hear from God? How do you hear from God? Because God does not speak to me. And then I uh, asked, so what do you do all day? Honestly, what do you do all day? Well, uh, I work, of course, I watch TV, and, you know, I give God about 15 minutes of my time reading Bible, and uh, pray three times a meal, three meals, pray, and you expect God to speak to you, right? So it's kind of oxymoron, isn't it? Well, I, I, I was preaching the other day in Korea to young people, well, why don't you put yourself in a situation where you desperately in need of God, that if, unless God speak, you're going to die. <laughs> then you're going to hear God very clearly, right? Trouble yourself. Put yourself in this circumstance. Why not, right? Uh, when uh, just backpack across Vietnam without knowing their language, That'd be kind of fun, right? Be found in a place where you can't really speak their language and you are desperate for some kind of leadership in your life. <laughs> That's where you hear God, right? And when that opportunity comes, we need to say that, yeah, it's me. I want to be that, right? Um, When God called Abraham and in a way uh, interviewed with Abraham, he said, Abraham, I'm going to make you a great nation. And Abraham says, but sir, I'm 75 years old. I don't even have a child. My father is an idol maker. How do I become a father to a great nation. How do I become a nation, right? Wow. It's like God speaking to a Korean man who's 75. I mean, well-to-do, not, not a poor guy, but his father is a Buddha statue sculpture. And then he had no child. And God comes and says, I'm going to, make you a great nation. Wow. Me? I have to believe that? <laughs> Are you speaking to me? <laughs> you know, the taxi driver, you mean? Are you talking to me? Wow. And to hear God says, go, I will make you a great nation. I will make you into a great name. I will make you into a source of blessing. Wow. Because that Greatness that God is talking about is not a nation, it's a person, right? It's a person. We, we need to focus the fact that it is not um, qualified person who had potential to become a great nation. No, it's just average Joe who's just committed to Christ would like to see God's kingdom come, right? Wow. We have to hear God when God speaks. He's not speaking to us at physical realm. He's speaking to us in giving in the spiritual realm and projecting the future onto us. And at that Kairos moment, at the split second, the moment you say, I believe, I'm going to go with God. Amen. That's when God start going forward. You know, going through all the crazy stuff God told me to do, CKA and out of this organization, we uh, wrote several PhDs. We gave the term 1.5 generation Korean American scholarly manner and published and, and uh, 
out of that research, a uh, lady became a professor at UCLA and several PhDs. Oh my goodness, I'm so thankful that just obeying God at the moment when God speaks is, I think, critical in our life. What say you? Amen. Are you ready to be a great nation, great name, and a great blessing? Are you dedicated to serve our Lord Jesus Christ and obeying the great commission by observing the great commandment to building up the great church of God? Let your day be such day today in Jesus' name. Amen. See you tomorrow.